so completely unplanned video here so roll with me just had an idea I started I've been waiting and staring at the mod rod for a while just lost on the front end everything about this chassis is modern independent front and rear suspension <clears throat> was four-wheel drive um, you know this was that Fijon FJ9 Bulldog drift chassis and uh, I threw this solid axle out front because I'm building the rat rod we got a cool independent rear, rear steer, rear air ride, and I wanted to, I need, I need some other element that's rat rodish to, <laughs> other than the body, to make this look actually look like a rat rod. So we went with the solid axle up front with the radius arms and the, all that old school stuff. And I've been sitting there staring at how to make air ride for a couple weeks now, and I've just been lost. And uh, you know it. <sighs> The way I've got the struts mounted here to the same mount as the radius arm, I really wanted to utilize that because that mount was an, a piece off the drift car, and it's you know it had two holes. It was perfect. Radius arm, air strut, boom. And I just there's no way to work around the engine. And I've been going out the side, down below. And I can't get enough leverage, and there's nothing on the chassis to mount uh, your your pivot point for a cantilever arm. I've tried making some stuff in the last video, I think it was the Friday night hangout in the shop video. I uh, did a little work on this and it all kind of failed. That's why it was just part of that video instead of its own standalone thing. And uh, yeah, so I started drawing some stuff here. And I hope you can see that on camera. I was like trying to figure out the basics of, of what I would need for a Kenny Lever arm and be able to make it work laying down needed an L-shaped bracket. I was finally, I've exhausted every spare piece from this kit trying to repurpose and reuse stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make some little aluminum L-brackets, trying to get a size and a feel for how much leverage I needed. And that got me looking at how I'm going to mount my pivot point to the front axle. Because that axle only has two holes in it. It's made for leaf springs to clamp around with U-bolts, like on the semi-trucks. So my first thought was to make something that goes in line with the radius arm. Well, I've done similar things before, uh, using the eyelets on the shocks, and your radius arm bolt goes through the shock, as well as the axle into the actual radius arm, the link, and uh, holds it all together. But then I got to thinking, it has the pivot. So like, when this tilts up and down, that's going to move up and down like that, and your axle is going to want to go with that unless you have a pivot on that point. So I drew of using one of the RC four-wheel drive scale heim joints on the end of whatever my cantilever arm was and that way I can use lock nuts on the stem of it because those don't have a, they're not like a normal rod in where you thread a little aluminum piece into the end of it. They actually have a steel piece made into it or aluminum into it. And then I could just use lock nuts and that way it would allow it to pivot on this arm for the cantilever and still hold tight enough you know it could be like a greasable joint that we could make I've done that on the, on the original rat rod it had a lot of pivoting pieces like that and I use lock nuts to hold the rods tight to the frame or the axle or whatever it was and then you just leave enough clearance between the lock nuts and the piece that you need to move and it's sturdy enough so <clears throat> that spawned a whole new way of thinking I put some of those uh, heim joints on the front axle between the radius arm I had to drill out the front axle because it is threaded and then I ran some long three uh, three mil scale bolts through through a heim joint and into the radius arm I'll show you that here in a second and then I was like what 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 do I have I started looking at carbon pieces I have some small little triangles and, and stuff from that chassis kit and I was just trying to find something that would work because I don't want to have some janky homemade piece of aluminum on there because everything else on here is machined and, and nice looking so I was trying to keep with the the theme of it and that's when I started playing with more of the carbon fiber stuff so here's where we're sitting right now I, I thought I'm, I'm having such a hard time figuring out where the pivot point will be I would go ahead and attach an end of something to the axle and into the strut and then just kind of lay it in there and see where my pivot point actually needs to be and see what I can come up with to actually work for that. And uh, so these pieces are the rear quarter panels basically off the body. And I love this curve here. It's very 
evil looking. Um, I am going to trim some of the inside of it out once I've got it all figured out how I'm going to do it and how it's going to mount. I don't want to take away any material until I'm 100% sure with what I'm what I'm going with. Okay, so you can see the hum joint here. It actually is pretty sturdy. It does allow movement and it will pivot front and back. Um, unfortunately, it also will pivot this way. But I've got a plan to counteract that. Uh, mounted the struts up here just to the only hole that was there at the time. And uh, put a bar through there. That's an RC4 drive. I think that's a 40 millimeter rod. I, <laughs> I love those. Those save me so much when I'm building these custom rigs. Um, I had a, luckily, I had a pack, a set of four of them left. I think I bought like 10 sets of those a while ago and uh, I only have one set of four left. So those are actually pretty close to the right width. This is down here, <clears throat> excuse me, it's actually like 43 millimeter. So I may shim it out, make it feel a little better, or I may shim the radius arms this way, put a lock nut on the other side. That would probably give me exactly what I needed. And that put one there, say one there, do four of them on this since I have four. <clears throat> and that I think will make this basically one solid unit. And then that will allow me to not have any of the side to side flex. It will only go up and down as a pair. It won't work independent, but I don't need independent because that system really doesn't do side to side anyway. We just need it to go up and we need it to go down. Um, let's move around here to the side to the actual pivot. Point. So this is, I'm using a rod, basically just a rod for the front suspension off of this kit. I think that was like a torsion arm or something maybe. Um, I'm not sure yet how to attach it to the frame. So I have brackets here that I've salvaged off the kit, little aluminum brackets, and they are already have holes in the frame for them. And I just had them there and that was from another failed idea. And uh, these are some of the little carbon elbows that I had pulled off the kit as well. And that happened to be the right length. But I would like to do away with this because that's only held in with one screw and under the right amount of pressure, it would twist and, and spin in there. So the problem now is there's not quite enough room, I don't think, between the radius arm and that bracket to run this straight down there and just use a, a longer link. And I'm thinking also it might be neat to have another arm or something here. That way that whole unit pivots basically <clears throat> front to back. It's just going to be a little more structure and it's going to look a little cooler. So uh, yeah, I have to tear it all apart. Now we're to the terrible part where you have to tear it apart, put it back together, tear it apart, put it back together. So the first thing I need to figure out here is this at my pivot point. Where is it actually going to attach? How many I'm going to have? If I'm going to throw another rod in there and, you know, make it look a little more beefy. I think this will hold. I'm not sure about using these uh, uh, ball joints off of the kit and these little ball cup ends. I thought about actually using some um, like regular rock crawler links, but I don't have a whole lot of selection of those in short lengths. They don't make a whole lot. 40 millimeter, like a, these up here, about the shortest. I've got some 20s, but that's they're fat. You know, they're all like five, six millimeter diameter and getting it down here is going to be the problem with a nut on it and everything. So I've got to come up with some solution for this bracket first. Then we're going to pull all this off. I'm going to mark and drill holes. I only drilled a hole over here because there's, there wasn't one there. This side does not have one. That's why it's kind of pushing up. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting until I can take it apart. I'll clamp these side by side, drill straight through so they're exactly even from side to side. So there's no funny leaning or anything with the, uh, with the suspension. And uh, also, up here on the front of this, I was thinking about making some sort of grill, slats or something in that piece, since our original plan here is probably not going to work. Having that grill up there just didn't in the jive right. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to catch you up here. It's so funny, I was just took the first picture of it, turned off all the lights, and I was going to go take a shower and go to bed. And I'm sitting there just looking at this picture and... and my mind just can't stop now. I'm, I'm on to something. Uh, it made me think back a long time ago, I was a, I was a manager at a retail store and we were having a big manager meeting and everybody was getting their butts chewed out by the store manager. And she was like, uh, 
really need everybody to think outside the box. And she looked me dead in the eye and pointed at me in front of everybody and said, except you, you're already two boxes out. <laughs> so I'm like, this just made me think of that because this is, this is kind of out of the box thinking. And uh, this is the stuff that makes it a lot of fun for me. So enough rambling. Um, that's the, the theory of what I'm after here. And let's see if we can actually execute it. Um, another thing I forgot real quick. I am going to have to widen the shock mounts out away just because this side's going to interfere with the motor. And I still haven't bought a motor. I still haven't picked a, a motor. <clears throat> uh, there was a lot of suggestions. Uh, most common one was a Holmes Hobby revolver motor because the outside spins. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I definitely need to have space for that in here. Another concern with that is the depth. Um, it may not be an issue. I can't remember. When this was in the, in the kit, I threw a big uh, Castle brushless motor in it. And it just barely fit between something. I think it may have been this plate back here, or it may have been part of the, the uh, actual body structure. So I don't know. We'll have to do some measuring before we ever do a engine. But I've got some five or six mil spacers on here. I'm probably going to have to double that and bring the shocks out a little further. But um, that may also help with some of the uh, wobbliness of this. Once we get it all rigid and everything, it shouldn't matter. But I don't know. Enough rambling. Let's get to work. Alright guys, so I got this all plumbed up here. A couple days have passed since the previous clip. Been a little busy, but I did a test then and it worked. So we're going to do it now. And I made a couple discoveries about the Pro Air RC kits. Um, I think I have the ramp truck plumbed wrong. So in plumbing this, I was going through when he quit producing those kits. He uh, sent me pretty much just leftovers. I had a couple complete kits and some odds and ends and stuff. And uh, I had a lot of T-connectors for the airline. And I got to thinking, I'm pretty sure the ramp truck is plumbed. One goes directly. There's, I mean, there's two outputs for the front, two outputs for the rear. And I just routed them straight through. And this one, I didn't have any straight connectors. So I just used T-connectors for the testing purposes only. And it works better. <laughs> I don't know... Uh, another variable is I'm running this off of a three cell as opposed to the two cell, which I have on the ramp truck. It sounds stronger. The compressor sounds like it's running stronger. Um, this compressor I have opened up, but this was the original one I started with the ramp truck build. So this one's been used quite a bit for testing. And uh, yeah, I haven't modified it, but I've got everything here. It goes from the air or the air cylinders to a T. Uh, then another T to the compressor. And the same thing on the back side. And I think it's gonna work better. <laughs> so uh, I'm just using this off of the uh, mud truck because I don't have an ESC or anything for this build yet. And uh, all right, we got nothing else over there, that's good. Why is my steering not working over there? That's weird, oh well. Oh. All right, anyway, so. The rear is a little stiff, a little slow. And we don't have enough weight on it to lower it all the way down, of course, because we don't have, I have set this on top, just trying to add some weight. We don't have a battery. We don't have a VSC radio uh, motor. You know, we don't have any weight up front. So I'm hoping. That is the reason why um, I got the wheels turned. I can't get it to go back because I don't have the servo hooked up. But I think it's going to work 
even better. And I need to go back and hook up a three cell and replumb the ramp truck. We can do that in another video and see if that improves its lift. We need to do some updates to that whole wiring situation on that. See if we can't make it a little more, a little more reliable. Cause this, this feels a lot better. And the way this works with this cantilever up front, it's giving us a ton of lift. So another thing, I may redo the rear air ride on this. Um, kind of got mixed reviews. I posted this last week on Instagram, a little video clip of it. And uh, some folks were not happy about all the exposed mechanics in the front. And that's kind of what I want to do with this build. I don't want it to be, it's not going to be a scale rat rod because it's modern. It's all futuristic looking components, all aluminum and carbon fiber. And uh, I'm thinking the rear may be a little too tame to go with the front. And this is just the first draft, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy with these links here. I just used some uh, of the carbon fiber from the frame and cut down to length. They already had holes that worked. But the, whatever it's called, the uh, <laughs> the theory works. It lifts, the, the whole mechanism having that rack on the front works. Um, I've considered even making like sheet metal or something to go over this, make a grill out of it, where it would actually go up and down with the suspension. So I don't know. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities opened up here and uh, I'm digging it. Uh, still not sure on the front steering. I really want to try a cable, uh, a cable drive steering. I need to do some looking. My HGP 801, the big 8x8 military truck, it has tandem steer axles that are cable driven. And I need to look at that, see how that all works. The kit, where is it? The kit itself did come with extra cable, but I don't know if that'll work because it's not in a, it's not like a throttle cable on a, you know, or a brake cable on a bicycle or a go-kart throttle cable or something that's sleeved. It's just the exposed cable. And I think on that truck it is sleeved. I'll have to go back and double check. But um, I think I, I could find a way to make it work. And I think we could add some more very cool looking mechanical goodness on this thing to make the steering work. And completely hide the servo in the cab out of the way. But that's that's going to be another big hurdle to overcome. First step, we got to get this air ride sorted out and engineered the way I want, but uh, here's a different angle of it so you can see the lift. So that's about maxed out on the rear. The front, that's about maxed out. But the good thing is I still have suspension travel and I'm trying to remember what struts I put or I think these struts were brand new. The springs are interchangeable. If you remember on the ramp truck build, we swapped around springs and I think I ended up putting in a bunch of my own springs in it to try and help it lift the load because that truck is significantly larger and heavier than this one's going to be. That just works so good. That cantilever angle and every, all of that is fantastic. But um, yeah, proof of concept, we're there. I still would like to streamline it a little bit. I've even considered maybe like lowering this down. Problem is when it's aired out, it's pretty much going to be on top of the motor. I've spaced all this away so it should clear the motor. The rubber boot might touch it. We may have to add another spacer in there or something. But um, I don't know. That was the whole problem with designing this front clip in this air ride is there's no good spot because everything has to bulge around the motor on this side. The other side, there's a little bit more clearance, but this side, you've got the motor plate. Um, on this side in the front, you have one of your pulleys for the uh, belt drive. And uh, which we really don't need that front belt drive because all it is is driving. Uh, oh no, we do need that because that's the motor. The motor pulley goes here. It drives this pulley, which pulls this pulley, which pulls that shaft, which pulls this. So it's not just driving the front gear. It is driving everything. So we can't do away with that. Never mind. But um, yeah, it's coming together. This is a big hurdle. And uh, it's like I said, this is probably not the final iteration of this design. But um, it's a big step. We've got it where the whole thing goes up and down. Um, I just may need to look at the rear a little bit more and do something a little bit more involved with that. A, mainly because it, it is sluggish going up. Because those shocks are at a weird angle. They're mounted down below the, the uh, control arm. It's just not a... 
I mean, it's plenty of lift. That's really all we need. Let's see if it'll go down. No. It's really all we need, but I think we may, may do something a little crazier with it. So guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Um, appreciate y'all watching. This was more of a engineering video than it was really a build. We got some stuff built, but like I said, we've made a lot of progress here on the engineering behind it. Now we have a functioning idea, basically. Proof of concept that now we can build off of and change. Um, I need some more parts. I'm running out of links and rods and stuff like that. I'm going to have to spend some money on RC four wheel drive again and uh, stock up on that stuff. It goes fast when you're doing these kind of builds. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. And um, also, there's now merchandise below. I got a logo, finally. The channel has a brand. Um, that's what I've been working on the past few days while this, this video got delayed. But uh, yeah, at the bottom of every video, I've got a couple items up. All the money goes back into the channel. And uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. But I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, keep it scale. I'll see you all in the next video.